today's episode something just a little bit different. We have a mousetrap design here that I've recreated that is an over 400 year old design. Uh, this particular one is what's sometimes considered to be what's called a guillotine design because it has origins in France and indeed it was used <clears throat> several hundred years ago throughout Europe not just in France uh, to help control the large rodent problem that they have and I didn't uh, resurrect this design from history there's a lot of other people that have I just thought it would be something fun and different to put on to show you guys right now something uh, you can try at home a lot of America is uh, spending a lot more time at home right now so this is something uh, fun that you can take and build and I found to be very effective actually um, this simple design here which I'll show you in a little more detail is a mouse catching machine I have set this thing about a half dozen times here in the shop and a half dozen times I've caught a mouse in it so it's um, a very effective design even though it's extremely old and uh, still very usable today so just to show you there's different ways you can make them um, traditionally the spring is made out of some type of steel here I've utilized wood literally I just made this out of a bunch of junk scrap I had laying around so you can play with the design but to start off if you want to build it you'll need a block of wood um, it doesn't have to be this long again it's just a junk piece of wood that I had but this measures about an inch and a half thick about four inches wide and then about 12 inches on the length so what you do to start is you will need some type of a spring mechanism these are just thin pieces of hickory the springs again it was just junk scrap that I had that I sanded down you don't need a ton of tension but enough that uh, it will make an effective spring as far as the thickness goes um, I'll show you everything here how it works but this is a little tension control the farther back you pull it the more tension it gives on the uh, upstroke this is just a little retaining piece screwed across the base portion of the springs and then it also consists of uh, little portions of brass wire that go down through here and form a noose but just to get back to the beginning how you do this you take your block of wood well, whatever dimensions you want and historically sometimes they'd make these things like a gang plank and they would have you know a dozen different holes lined up so whatever size you want you can make a single or a double but you take your block of wood those approximate dimensions that I mentioned and you're gonna take and drill a hole in the end um, you want to make them about one inches in diameter I've used just a Forstner bit and then drill them back about two inches on the depth when you get done with that get a little closer here you want to take and drill two small holes I made these an eighth inch right there and then fall back to where you see this string about a half inch and drill two more holes eighth inch and those are gonna go all the way through the top on the front holes and then on the back set it goes clear through the hole out the bottom so you're gonna have two sets of holes up front drop back a half inch and those ones gonna go all the way through you can use either a drill press to do that or a hand drill if you think you can keep it fairly straight but what you do then on the front holes is you take brass wire I would imagine heavy fishing line would probably work if you don't have wire but wire is what's recommended and you're gonna form a little noose through those front holes out of brass wire that's gonna go down form a little noose the wires gonna poke back up through those front holes and then I have it twisted several times around there so that it's not going to slip off okay that's the noose section that's going to catch the head of the mouse on the rearward holes you're going to take and put a piece of thread through there and tie it off with a square knot you can see them sticking down through there and the way this works that's what anchors uh, the spring obviously but what you do 
is the back side of the hole. All the way in the back is where you'll put your bait. Now I just use peanut butter and I'll put a little dab of it in the very back of the hole where the hole stops and then smear some on those strings. And the way it works is the mouse will go in here, he'll crawl up through there, he'll come to those strings and because there's bait smeared on it but especially because the, the main portion is in the back he'll chew through those threads to get to that bait and when he does that whoosh spring goes up mouse is caught around the neck and it's actually a very humane kill if you will it works very very well efficiently you want to make sure when you're setting your wire up it's fairly close to the bottom it doesn't have to be all the way on the base and then check to make sure that uh, there's not a lot of gap up here when it's sprung because if there's a lot of gap the mouse, mouse can wiggle out but if you don't have much it'll catch them and hold them securely so again that's kind of the nutshell version of how that works I'll show you uh, how to set it hold on just a second here but again you can make these arms if you want to use um, steel for a spring you can some people have used uh, the metal uh, wire hanger or handles off of five gallon buckets that you can bend at a right angle come out here and that'll provide your spring tension you got to anchor it some way at the back but again I have this little uh, adjustment here and the farther back that's just a dowel rod the farther back you pull this the tension will be increased on this you don't need a ton obviously it's just a mouse but enough tension that it quickly catches the mouse and holds them and then this is just a flat piece of wood that's an anchor that fits over these two arms and then just screws in there to hold that in place. So again, it's just made out of junk scrap wood, but it works very, very good. So to demonstrate how this works, pretend that uh, this pair of scissors here, let me get in there so you can see it, is the mouse. And he goes in there and starts working on the string. Uh, catches him around the neck you can see how the spring has been sprung and that catches them and uh, dispatches them in a very uh, efficient and humane manner and like I said that this thing has been set off six times and six times I've caught a mouse so it works very very well so to set it I'll go ahead and show you that pull the string out of there and the type of thread that you use to set this, you don't want something that's real super thick because you make it too thick, the mouse can have a hard time chewing through it. So fairly thin. This is just the linen thread that I use to sew like fabric. But I use a needle and let me get it lined up. A needle that goes through the bottom hole. Or no, let me do it the other way. That's a little easier. Goes down. It's harder to do on camera there we go okay so it goes down through that top pull pull the thread through turn it around there it is back up through the top pull and if you need to move the arm out of the way you can bring it up through and then you take and just tie a square knot on it which I might have to go off camera a second to do this but you just push it down tie a square knot off and after your square knot set it should anchor it so I'm gonna finish tying the knot off camera because I have to hold it a certain way but that will uh, securely hold that down and again it works very very well and is efficient at catching mice so um, thank you once again for tuning in everybody this I know this video was a little different but I thought it would be something fun to show like I said if you find yourself spending a lot more time at home this is something you can uh, have a lot of fun building and it works very very well I'd like to invite you if you're new to our channel to subscribe that way you'll get the notifications when the new videos come out and some people have asked if we have all of our 18th century wares for sale somewhere we do indeed we have a website if you look right down here in the right hand corner of your screen you'll see a little icon that says website and that will that link will take you straight to us so once again everybody thank you so much for tuning in 
and we look forward to doing some more videos with you on down the road.